first, let me introduce our presenter today, Martin Richard. I've known him for some years now. He's He's been a teacher for 20 years for engineers. Then he's an educational consultant. He has been for 14 years. He also works to create actualized uh, study programs or curriculums in CGEPs. He also works at Performa. So have a good webinar. I give the floor to our presenter. Thank you, Nicole. That's my turn now to say hello. Let me share my screen. All right. Hello, everyone. Thanks for the introduction, Nicole. Today, I'll share with you something that comes from thoughts and reflection that I've had. I want to share it with educational consultants. As we think about how to introduce new skills and cross-functional skills, it won't be a very formal presentation. It's more of a discussion, a coffee machine discussion. I'll show you the results of my work over the past years. If you want more details, then you can contact me later, later on. So I'll talk about the implementation of training programs in CIGEPS. It will take only seven to eight minutes. I want to talk about those processes and the different elements that we handle. Then I'll talk about the development and integration of new skills in a training program. Let's kick it off. In CGEPS, we call it a departmental program specifications, Department of Education's program specifications. It's a framework, of a pretty stiff framework. There are different different skills that the department sends to us. Sometimes they are ordered, there are good descriptions, and it allows us to picture what the final product will be in a specific program. First, a reminder, what's a skill? Ms. LaRue, uh, I, I base my reflection on Ms. LaRue's theory. There are four big categories. First, you have to mobilize resources. So it's a whole backpack of resources. There's also know how to act like complex uh, knowledge regarding acting. It has to be complex tasks. Also knowing how to act in a certain context, and it has to lead to an action and observable impacts. When it comes to training programs, we talk about departmental uh, program specifications. We think about how we will design the programs locally in our uh, specific colleges. So then we design what we call the output profile. It can take different forms. Sometimes it's it's a text, one page, two pages. There you have a description, and it gives a picture of what the student will be like at the end of the program. There's an output profile in nature science or natural science. And I think there's always a integration end goal. You have to be able to answer the question at the end. What will the student be able to do at the end of the program? So there you have it. Uh, you, there you have the description. Normally, it's an integration end goal. If you work on curriculum design, you, you're you used to it. You know that you will relate it to, to the program summary or the, uh, or the exam. Then we put it in relation with the integration end goal. Then you play with the different skills that the department send to us. We'll make a, a charge, um, skill charge. 
we'll try to give an order. We try to group different skills. We use arrows. We give a certain meaning. Sometimes it's a kind of mess, or sometimes it's well ordered when you work with uh, IT people, for example. There you have it. I wanted to contrast the two slides. I think you understand. Teachers all have different brains, right? So that reflects in the kind of, uh, of a skill chart that you see. Let's keep going. And down the road, we'll design courses. There we, you will distribute the skills. There's that there's that, that group of competence that, uh, of skills that come from the department and you want to um, break them down in different, uh, in, diff in different courses. That's the way I like to present it. In the left column, you have the courses designed by the professors or the teachers. And then at the top, you have the different skills. In the middle, you see how it's uh, it spreads in different courses. When you have a single course, then you call it complete, so you see a C. For example, intervention, language and communication, there's a C there because the skill is the skill relies on a single course. It's complete. A P, what does it mean? It, there can be different meanings. It's a partial, it's a par partial uh, coverage. You can picture it, there are three ways. Sometimes there are only elements of a skill. So it's the different details in the department uh, program specification. Or, so a course can develop points one, two, three, then another course points uh, four, five, six. I'll try to slow down because I'm thinking about the interpreter. A second way it's, it's distributed. There can be different levels of mastery. In the first uh, semester, there can be a certain mastery. Then in a third or fourth semester, you can take up that skill and then bring it to a higher level of mastery. Yes, we're still in the skill coverage uh, slide. Third level. Sometimes you want to develop a single skill in two different contexts. For example, in agriculture, in the agriculture program, maybe you want the skill with animals, and then you want to use that same skill with plants. You, you can think of other examples as well. It's another way that skills are distributed within a range of courses. Then you'll end up with this kind of course chart that summarizes a lot of information the way it's graded the way skills are covered it can take different forms sometimes it's beautiful sometimes it's very simple then down the line what do you have you have a program or something like that and it reflects the skills that the minister wants us to develop as part of the program. Coming back to my introduction, or that was my introduction about a pro a program development. Now, when you want to develop cross-functional skills or complementary skills, skills that are not in the minister's program specifications, some people ask, is it allowed by the department? Yes, it is. The minister says you have to design a program with those skills, but it doesn't say that you, you can't add to that. 
there you have the the department's uh, skills that are taken care of by uh, the courses. And maybe you want to add other skills as an addition, as a complement. Looking at this kind of picture, I feel like uh, we should talk about complementary skills and not cross-functional skills. It depends the way you see it. Often skills are developed in uh, developed in different uh, contexts, so they are already cross-functional. But there's a terminology question here. I use two different words, cross-functional and complementary. Sometimes it means the same thing, but for some people it can mean different things. I don't want to debate the question here, but what I'm talking about, it's skills that you want to add to the program. They can be cross-functional or complementary. Uh, the, the jury is out on that debate. Which complementary skills do we want to develop? Just uh, going back to the output profile, what kind of student do you want to train? What will be the requirements on the job market? What kind of flavor do you want to give those students? What skills do you want to add as opposed to the ones that are in the minister's specifications or the department specification? Let's go back to the older, the one I'm familiar with, the typical profile. I worked on it in 2009 to in 2010. There's a team in CEGEP that uh, design skills, cross-functional skills, and they were inserted or included in uh, training programs. The I'm talking here about the ICT profile. And I recently worked on the agroecological uh, profile and also an intercultural profile in nursing care. In the agriculture, agriculture training program, we wanted to give a certain flavor to the program. So we imagine a set of uh, skills that we wanted to include in the program in farm management and technology. When it comes to the intercultural profile in nursing, well, you probably gather that I'm from Joliet. Things happened down in Joliet in the hospital with our uh, Atikamek community. So we felt the need in our college to respond appropriately to give a better training to our students in nursing care so that they have better intercultural uh, skills. So we structured those uh, skills. I won't go into details, but you, you'll you see it uh, pop up in the slides. I will talk more about the process, the process today. How do we do that? I suggest there's a three-step process. First, an inventory of existing practices, then defining skills, and finally, program integration. First, inventory of exi existing practices. How do we do that? Well, normally I turn to the teaching team. Sometimes we have one-on-one -on -one, uh, discussions and surveys, and we want to know what happens and the, related to the theme, the theme related to the skills that we want to integrate. So we'll use all initiatives from teachers, including the ones that are done in secret, or especially the ones that are done in secret. Sometimes there's a teacher who invited a presenter, another teacher decided to talk about this or that in their course. It's not part of the program, but they find it important. All those elements that are related to the theme that we want to push forward, so we make uh, charts, tables. 
it's all about uh, learning activities. So courses, conferences, projects, it can be also assessment activities and contents. So at first, it's not going to be very well ordered, but then well structured those uh, well structured those elements. We'll gather all this, and then we'll need a content expert because the educational advisor is not an expert in agro eco, eco, ecological studies or in inter, intercultural skills and so on. So we, you need an expert, depending on the profile to be developed, of course. That person will think it out, think it through. They will look at that inventory. They will structure and group the different elements. They'll try to create themes. They'll put words on those different elements. And those, those words have to be accurate. They have to be precise. They'll define different elements. And that's how they'll structure that whole offer, those initiatives that are already happening. And they'll, they'll see where things are missing. Take an intercultural profile, for example. Maybe you want to develop skills that are not developed at the moment and that will cover different aspects. So, so the expert will give proposals of things that are not covered yet. And that can give a direction to uh, what the uh, te teaching team wants to structure or to, to offer to create. Let me give you an example here. It's the in intercultural profile in nursing care in Joliet. By no way is it exhaustive. It doesn't cover everything. We're not saying that that's exactly what you have to go for in all colleges. No, that's not how we see it. That's what caters to the needs of a certain teaching team and based on the uh, recommendations of the expert as well. So first, there, so there are two fields. First, openness to interculturality, and then the communication in an intercultural context. There you have definitions. It, it's starting to look like skills to recognize and to, and to identify uh, intercultural context, for example. So that comes from the work of the whole team, the teachers, the uh, advisor, and the expert. And there you see a list of courses. For those courses, we we call it we call it competencies, but we can call it skills. This is, those are the courses where that skill will be taken care of, will be uh, taught. For example, in green, you have nursing care, you have sociology, you have psychology with different colors. And when you look at the different skills, you see the concepts or the notions that will be included in the program. So those courses will cover those elements. Let's move to communication. We have two skills, establish relationships with people from different cultures and communicate with people from different cultures. And then there are courses there that support those skills. There you have it. There's a big picture, a structured picture of the skill profile. I like to look at it as aside from the program. That, pro, that skill profile looks like this. There are eight skills covered. 
those skills make sense for the teachers, for the expert that worked with the teachers, and those skills can be taught. Just look at the at the graphic here. We presented it to the different people in charge in the in the college up to the uh, to the board, just to show how we will develop those intercultural skills for people in nursing care in Joliet. Now, agroecology. There's a lot more themes. Those are not skills, they are themes. And behind those themes are about 15 new skills. And there's, it's more detailed here as opposed to the nursing care profile, but I don't have a problem with that. I want the teachers, I want it to make sense for the teachers. I want them to understand and I want them to take care or cover those uh, skills so we don't have to go down to the to the very details so i just present here the the first five skills i won't uh, present the the 10 other skills now we have a consistent product how do we include include that in the uh, training program Those skills and the coverage of those skills need to become objectives uh, and acti activities and also content markers. So learning goals or learning objectives, learning activities and content markers. It all depends on the courses. Sometimes there'll be goals, activities and almost no markers, it depends. Oh, I almost forgot. those skills, those elements need to be assessed. That's important because at the end of the program, students have to attain a certain level of mastery of those skills. The same way we have to assess that they master the skills uh, dictated by the Department of Education. So we also have to assess those uh, added skills. Here's an example in nursing care. the first skill, to identify and recognize uh, cultural diversity. Then you have, in the second column, the courses that will cover those skills. Third column, you have something like uh, learning goals. And then you have the number of the semester so that it's easier to understand. That the educational consultant will work with the team to see how does it translate in those uh, courses as a teaching objective or learning objectives, and then it'll become uh, learning activities. It has to be part of the program. It cannot rely only on initiatives from the teachers. So at first we had that, they were not very structured, but at this point we have a structured initiative. How to include that in the program? Well, you have to modify the framework the syllabi. In my opinion, syllabi, uh, framework syllabi, were designed by the program, by the whole program, the teaching team all agree that that's how the course should be taught in a specific program. Maybe I'll give another uh, presentation on, on syllabi later, but that's my vision. So you have, there you have it, new learning goals, new learning activities, and new content markers. And you have to integrate, include that in the framework syllabi. Why? Well, because we don't we don't want to be just we don't want to rely only on teacher initiatives. Framework syllabi vary from one college to the next. 
sometimes sometimes uh, it um, answers the minister's specification, sometimes not. But there you have it within a framework syllabus. Then you'll add those new skills because now they are part of the program. They are covered in different courses. Some courses will participate to the development of those skills. So we'll have to rewrite the syllabi to, to state which course covers which skill and how. So it's a three, three step pro process, inventory of existing, pra existing practices, defining skills, and then program integration through framework syllabi, but also through documentation where you know which course covers which skill or which skills. Can you transfer that process? In my opinion, yes, you can transfer that. You can imagine other skill profiles. When it's cross-functional skills or complementary skills, you can picture that kind of process to structure a skill, a skill profile and include it the same way in almost any program. Some examples that I work that I've worked on. Some people ask me, how much time does it take to do that kind of work? It depends when you do that. In the program lifespan. So that's a question. Nicole suggested something during her introduction. I smiled when I heard I heard that. There are different ways you can do that. And there's a way I do prefer personally. When you're designing a program, when there's a new department's uh, specification chart, chart, for example, maybe you want to give a flavor to the program and that's, that's fine. You can identify an output profile with a certain agro, agroecological vision. That being said, Teachers are very busy. They have a lot of work to do during uh, that process of designing the programs. Normally teachers are not very available when they are doing that work to on top of that, working on a skill profile, they have to understand the processes, understand the minister's uh, specification, uh, the department specifications. They, they have to understand the contexts, of uh, skill achievements. They have to create a profile for the department's skills. It's very hard at that point to include uh, complementary skills at that very moment. It's not impossible, but you need a very seasoned teaching team that know how to design programs. But after, when, it, when you do an update three or four years down the road, then I think it's possible to do that. Otherwise, here's the best moment in my opinion. When the teaching team is com comfortable with their own program, they're comfortable with all they've put in the program. The skills are at the right place. They know how courses cover different skills. That's when I see availability or openness on the part of teachers. Then teachers think, well, let's add something now. Let's put a flavor, a special flavor to our program. Let's introduce a set of skills to the program. That's when the teaching team will rely on the existing program and they will then create a new uh, skill profile. So that's my opinion. And how long does it take for those processes? One semester will 
do the inventory, we'll work with the expert, we'll structure that profile. And by the end of the semester, we'll start uh, including it in framework syllabi. So over the time of a, sem a semester, we'll have enough time to introduce that and to introduce that in the training program. It's a little past noon. I think I went over my content. It took only half an hour. Very interesting. I'm ready to take the answer the questions. Yeah, there are four questions and and we could discuss further discuss further because it was very interesting. First question. Cross functional skills that are included in a course, are they assessed in a as a whole? Well, I talked about it before. For example, uh, if you want to display uh, acro ecological profile in a program, if you want to be able to state that students have that intercultural uh, skills in nursing care, you have to assess the skills. Sometimes people ask, are teachers comfortable teaching cross-functional skills and assess uh, cross-functional cross functional skills. Well, if they are not comfortable, well, we'll have to train the teachers because they are the one who are going to put in place teaching activities in order to have students attain a certain number of objectives. In the agroecological profile, for example, there were students very comfortable with those elements. In the intercultural profile in nursing care, well, We've worked, we've we've trained students for two for two years. We we couldn't avoid training uh, our our students on the tracker soul skills. Sometimes skills can be related to a certain program. It can complement. Or it can show how you can approach a certain skill, but I'll let you talk, I'm sorry. Isabel asks, can we assess skills that are not part of the minister's specific, uh, the department specification, specifications? The answer is yes. What does the Department of Education says? They don't talk about the level of mastery. There are criteria in terms of performance what we can observe in students. But when it comes to cross-functional skills, yes, we can assess them. Yes, we can assess those complementary skills, no problem. Another question from Isabel. Does it put a heavy weight on the program? Did you have to change certain content to create space for those skills? Programs are not so flexible. There's the department specifications. So we have to, so there you have a certain number of hours and we have to respect that number of hours from the department. Maybe you want to introduce new learning activities with uh, different objectives. There you have to make space for that. The teaching team have to be aware of that. If you want to work on an agroecological profile, you'll have to teach that, or you'll have to teach the skills from the department with uh, agroecological angle. Sometimes it takes more time, sometimes no. It's just taking a different approach. because you'll, you'll define a different uh, achievement context for those skills. Sylvie asks, does it put in question the department's qualifications? There are already skill profiles in different programs and then there are optional skills and so on. Yeah, yes, I understand that. There are more and more uh, departments uh, requirements that suggest different optional and mandatory skills. 
that allows to give a certain flavor to our training program. A set of cross-functional skills don't actually go against the uh, department's specifications. Those are still the same. The performance criteria and so on, it's, uh, it's mandatory. So you, so you just add something with cross-functional skills. Sometimes it takes more time, sometimes less time. For example, intercultural skills in nursing care, there are small elements in the department specifications, but we structured the whole thing. We defined what we wanted from our students and the teaching team was willing to give space for those new skills among all the other skills that the students had to learn. Thank, thank you, Martin. Three more questions, at least. Jeremy Cormier Tremblay. How will you find an expert? A teacher that is uh, a specialist, uh, academic, all of the above. All those examples are relevant. In agriculture, we had a teacher that he, uh, had a master's degree in agroecology. And despite that, we actually found a professor in uh, Université Laval or Laval University. That's in agriculture. Then in the intercultural profile, of course, we reach out to people that know the topic, people who think about those topics. We didn't ask people, uh, prof university professors, just in college, it was enough. We found, we found experts there. That was enough to be able to accompany a teaching team in the integration of cross-functional skills. We also have to explain uh, how the integration process works, but that, that's something we can explain ourselves. We can accompany the, per, the expert with. The idea is to reach that objective at the, at the end of the day. Milen asks an interesting question. Those new skills, do we put them on the same level as the department's uh, skills? 45 hours of teaching, standards, objectives, and so on. The description is not as precise as in the minister's specifications. We didn't identify uh, performance criteria and so on. It's more general because the teaching team wanted that, wanted, wanted to keep things uh, more general. So our de description is not as detailed. And also the number of hours uh, that is used to cover those skills is not predefined or preset. When you design the framework syllabi, that's when you define or you set the number of hours that you will uh, put into those skills. That's when you quantify the, the value that those skills will have within the framework syllabi. We're talking about a number of hours that people will agree with and that will make sense for the teachers, but we don't give 45 hours to each skill, for example. In the typical profile, we develop we developed it with skills, objectives, tasks, then it was easy to include them uh, within the department's specifications. We could do that, but it's, uh, it's, a, big, uh, it's a big job. Uh, when we talk about intercultural or agroecological profiles, we don't think we have to go that far. Seb asks this, so you add skills, so will there be a different uh, number of hours in one course? It can happen.
when you design your profile and you see how to integrate it, you can, at the end of the day, you can decide, oh, we, we will need more hours. So then you have to update the program. How do you, where do you add an hour? Where do you withdraw an hour? But in my experience, those are minor adjustments. We haven't had to totally reshuffle the number of hours in the different courses. We also added some prerequisites. We're talking about an update, but a fine, fine, uh, but fine-tuned uh, adjustments. Martin Levesque said, in the department's specifications, the cross-functional skills are more implicit. Do you want to answer that question, Martin? I'm not sure I understand the question. You can picture the, the profile that suits you. The teaching team will decide. They'll say, oh, here's the direction we want to take. Is it implicit in the department specifications? When it comes to the agro agroecological profile, maybe a little bit. When it comes to the intercultural profile in nursing care, no, it was, it, there were very few elements in the department's specifications. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. It depends on the direction you want to take. Two last questions, we'll try to make it quick. Sorry, Sylvie and Martin. About the funding of courses that are not linked to the department's uh, requirements. Yes. It's impossible to have a course without the department's skills. When you design a course, it has to cover the department's skills. So you have to add, add some, some objectives, add some skills, some complementary skills within the, the existing courses. So yeah, there's a dance there. But that's the reason why there's no funding problem here because the funding structure is still the same. Are there data on the impact of introducing uh, cross-functional skills on the short answer is no. Long, is, long answer is it depends. When you have an intercultural profile, do students do better or worse? There are so many variables, so many factors. It's hard to assess the impact of a new profile. In nursing care, I don't think that the profile makes people uh, succeed less. Uh, so I, in my opinion, the skill profile should be uh, taken in isolation from uh, the uh, achievement. Thanks for your presentation, Martin, today. It was very clear, well-structured. Martin says, thank you. Put that in the chat space, Martin. Thanks for everything. So Martin, see you again. It was very inspiring. Go on, you can eat lunch before your next meeting that will start at 1 p.m. Meanwhile, people in the chat are saying thank you.